Some dinosaurs are able to gather everyone's attention by just being big. Others does it by just being weird looking. And some of those creatures are the concavenator. It may not be the biggest, but it has a frill that makes it stand out. But regardless of size and appearance, how does it fare in a fight? Let's find that out. Hello there, my name is Adam Lokte, and in this video I'm going to show you how to properly fight as a concavenator, otherwise known as a concave or just a conch. Now any future update may change the way you play as this creature, so what I'm about to say may just be temporarily. My time with this creature are pretty limited, so one of you more experienced concavenator players might not agree with everything I say, and if you find something disagreeable, well, I got a question for you. For those that actually main this creature, are you the type that are always up for a challenge, just out of curiosity? In any case, in this video, we'll be going over the creature's arsenal, the subspecies you should choose to grow, its fighting style, and the terrain compatibility. After, we will go over the fights you can find yourself in, be it against Apex, mid tiers, or low tiers. I will also briefly talk about the water fights you can find yourself as this creature, and at the end, I'll summarize. For head ability, we only have your standard head bite. Do pay in mind that even if the stat sheet may say that you do as much damage as an Allosaurus, you don't. Size matter, and your combat weight are way less than an Allosaurus. I'm not gonna go into details on how much damage you actually do since it kinda depends on where you hit your target, however, do expect it to be less than you think. We have three options for sensibilities, the first one being all for one. Basically a damage multiplier, but it only works if you're in a group and it can be stacked depending on how many members are in that group. So it only stacks up up to 5 times. Fresh blood increases your attack, but you have to be within a certain distance to a bleeding creature. Nictating membranes are just underwater goggles. There are three options for front limbs, the first one being the standard claw attack that causes bleed to anything you bitch slap. The second one is balance that makes you able to dance around your enemies by increasing your turn radius. Webclaw are basically you saying fuck you evolution I want to go back to water. Your three options for height, the first will make you go zoomies, but your turning speed on that of a snail. Scabbing bleed gives you that one ability that probably every woman would want for that one time of the month. And streamliner also gives you the zoomies but in water. Your two options for back limb, the first one being dive, do pay in mind that you can't actually stay in water without this activated. And the other one being rip and kick. Basically, if the bitch slap doesn't work, try fly kicking them. Your two options for tail, the first one being tail whip attack, though it doesn't really do that much damage seeing that your tail are pretty puny and small, doesn't matter if it has good personality. The other one are paddling tail, which are basically you saying, it's not the size of the tail that matter, but the way it rides the waves, or something like that. When it comes to what subspecies you should choose to grow, I kinda say it kinda depends on what you're planning to f or how you plan to fight. If you're planning to fight mostly water battles, then you should go for the swimming subspecies. However, against Apexes, I found the bleeding one to be best, and also mid tiers, it can work. The stamina recovery also works against Apexes, but I find it a bit more difficult compared to the bleeding, though I would say it's the best one when it comes to mid tiers. On paper, I do put the concavenator down on low tier, stat wise at least. He doesn't really have too much going on for him, doesn't have any special or unique abilities, uh, he's not really safe on either land or in water. He doesn't have slick scales, so he can definitely be pounced by raptors or grabbed by Hatsukopteryx, and in water he may fall victim to other semi-aquatics. So I'm just gonna say it right now, Concavenator are definitely a bleeder rather than a brawler. I mean, he can do brawling, don't get me wrong on that. However, that is only against a creature who has inferior stats compared to him. In other words, against other creatures, modern or official, doesn't matter, you are looking at of a more hit and run strategy kind of creature. With, of course, again, with the exception of low tiers. It would be in your best interest to team up with anyone, however, this video is about solo play, so we're gonna focus on solo play.
Now we know that the concave and error on the toughest of creature, we will know that we will have to use the terrain to our advantage. So I place with a bit more hindrances and especially a source of water so you know you have an escape route, that will definitely be the best for you. Just make sure that the enemy doesn't turn the tables and use the terrain to their advantage. To be completely honest, against Apexes, you should only go for those who are letting their guards down and sleeping. Honestly, the stat difference are just too much to take an Apex down alone. And if you can't hunt an Apex alone, why the heck are you watching this video? And the bigger question, the fuck was the Apex player doing? But if you insist on fighting Apexes, if you can execute a plan perfectly, then you should in theory be able to kill an Apex. I say in theory, I haven't proven anything. Try to stay in the blind side of your enemy's main weapon. In this example, it's with a Bart's Bolia and their main weapon are the tail, which means try to go for the head attacks. For a T-Rex, try to tail ride them and stay away from their mouth. Apexes are usually slow, so use your superior speed to outflank them and get in their weak spots. Do not focus on damage, you won't do much anyway. Focus on getting that bleed in, and do everything in your power to keep that bleed on. You need to learn how to do proper baiting, and when they are in their attack cooldown, that's when you attack. This strategy will be more difficult if your enemy decides to back him off into a wall. If he can get you to attack from only one direction, it will be easier to counter you. However, that plan will fall flat if it doesn't hinder you from attacking from all angles. If you do it properly, and you have the patience, then your enemy's health will eventually wear down. You just need to continue this strategy until your enemy are low enough for you to deal the finishing blow. Unfortunately, there are only so much you can do solo, and you don't have infinite stamina, so you will have to create some distance, rest, and then continue the fight. Having hindrances like elevation will make it easier for you to create safe distance, and or difficult for your opponent to get to you. Now do pay in mind, it's not easy to take down an Apex alone, and in comparison to you, they don't need to land many blows to kill you. So if you do get low on health, it's better to call it off. Or if you're spartan enough, just go out with a bang. Against Apexes, I recommend this arsenal. You don't really need to invest too much in turning speed as you are faster than them, so turning speed aren't really that necessary. Turning speed are way more important if you're going to do a head-to-head -head battle. This arsenal are best suited for hits and run and to keep your enemy bleeding. And just in case if the battle doesn't go your way, you have the dive ability ready, so you can go into water if you need to. For mid tiers, it's the same thing. You gotta start off with getting that bleed in. To be completely honest, I would say it's a bit more difficult to face off against mid tiers compared to apexes. They do have the speed to be able to keep up with you. However, you do have the better turning circle, at least if you invest in that. To be completely honest, you have different ways you can approach this type of fights. The big difference between these two arsenals is that the back limb kick ability uses stamina, the claw ability does not, and having the kick ability does prevent you from being able to go into water. On the other hand, you will have better turning speed with the arsenal below, and it can help you to get a few more extra hits in. I would say the arsenal below are more riskier, but more damaging. I will conclude with that the arsenal on top are better if you play solo, however if you are in a group then you can use the arsenal below. While they may have as much speed as you, you have much more mobility compared to the mid tiers. So if they do start chasing you, you just need to outturn them. You know like a bull and a matador, basically that situation. This strategy will be difficult to use against Picton and Mosaurus as they have also good turning circle, not to mention they are faster than you. In which case, try to use the terrain to your advantage and then try to get away. In any case, no matter what mid tiers you're up against, try to tail ride as much as you can, get that bleed in, and then you can deal the finishing blow when it gets low enough. Against mid tiers, you will find this fight to be different from the other tiers. The arsenal I recommended before, the second one below the other one, is yes, this one. You see, 
I really recommend this one due to the fact that you kind of need the turning circle to be able to keep up with the low tiers, well, the lowest of low tier. You may have the same speed, but when it comes to mobility, they just turn around on a dime. It's difficult to keep up with them without the boost in turning speed. If they do decide to fight head to head, then they will find that strategy to be quite disappointing for them. It's also really difficult to get that kick in, but if you can, then you should definitely get that kick in to put them even under more pressure with the bleed. Now if they do pounce on you, and they probably will, then it is best to just stand still and then just buckle them off. If you move on too much, you will just make the bleed worse for yourself. If they are close enough to your mouth, then you can try and counterattack by biting them. Unfortunately, you will probably run out of stamina before they do, and they do recover that faster than you, so it's best to do a more defensive stand, then counterattack when they get close enough. Against raptors at least, you will do good damage, so that's good at least. There's not much you can do if you are attacked by a pack. There are too many, so it would be best to just run away. I mean, it's you or just many. The odds are against you. However, if you do insist on fighting, then it would be best to just target one person and then go for him. You are a fast creature, and even though it can be improved, you still have really good turning speed. If you are skilled enough or you are in a laggy server, then it shouldn't be too difficult dancing through your enemies, though the lag will also make it more difficult for you to land a blow, and your enemies might just hit each other in friendly fire. But again, all you need to do, try to single out one enemy and also not get stuck on the environment, and then kill them when you get the chance. Now I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I don't think you really should try water fights. You see, even though he is a semi-aquatic, the water speed of a concavenator aren't really that impressive. I mean seriously, a Sarko can swim backward faster than a concave can swim with streamline and water tail. The only way for a concave to dodge the Sarkozukus attack is just by swimming upwards or downwards. However, stamina wise, the concave will lose stamina way quicker than the Sarkozukus. Even compared to other semi-aquatics, its speed aren't that much to boast about. If anything, it feels more like an alternative escape route if things shouldn't go well for you on land. With lack of speed in water, you'll be mostly faced with the head-to-head -head battle, and as you can remember, that is a fighting style that the concave doesn't really excel at. The best you can do is just run up to land, hope that they'll follow you, and then you can have the terrain advantage. So to summarize, against Apexes, try to do hits and run. Do not focus on doing damage, focus on getting that bleed in and then stack it. Try to bait your enemy into attacking and when they are in cooldown, that's when you do your attack. If you get low on stam, try to create some distance, recover that stamina and then continue until he is low enough for you to finish it off. Against mid tiers, just tail ride them to death. And when they're low enough, then you can do a more direct approach. Against low tiers, try to force them into a head to head clash, they will hate it. And if not, do a defensive stand and try to predict where they will end up. If you're attacked by multiple opponents, if you cannot fight them, run away. If you can, single one out and then roast them like the pig they are. Water fights, don't do them, just don't. If you have any specific creature you want me to cover, go to my community post. There you will see how to suggest and vote for creatures, and with that, I will see you guys later.